Hello everyone and welcome to another CBC review. This is Tom and Tom reviewing uh, Star Trek Beyond, which we just saw last night, uh, midnight screening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was surprisingly Love- good. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone expected it to be great. And I think, especially with the trailers, the marketing campaign really fucked this movie because the trailers do not look like the film that we just saw in theatres. Yeah, it was kind of weird. I think they were trying to stab, trying to capitalise on the fact that they got the director who did the Fast and Furious films. I think that's probably the reason why. Yeah, I think also a big part of it as well is that because so much of the action is a massive spoiler to the film, they couldn't show a lot. I mean, you think the major action scenes are either you can tell who the main bad guy is because he's transformed. I mean, full spoilers, by the way, in this review, so turn off now if you haven't seen the movie. Yeah. But the final fight they couldn't show in the trailers because he's basically transformed back into Idris Elba. They yep. couldn't show the Enterprise getting taken down because that's also... I mean, they've shown that in trailers before, and I think it was in the trailer, kind of, but not to the extent. Yeah, I remember how many times I, I said to you when we were watching the film, so how many times has the Enterprise has been blown up or shot down now? Yeah. And these I, films all... I mean, it's, it's a running gag at this point, which yeah. is it's something that I've come to expect from a Star Trek movie come, uh, nowadays. I mean, I don't like it necessarily that they always seem to do it, but, I mean, maybe the next one will be uh, different. Yeah. But, I mean, the thing is with this, a lot of the key scenes in the movie is people talking and that's what i loved about this movie it's what i love about original star trek and it's it's a lot of character development and a lot of just the characters just in they just basically it's the classic drama situation of you put these characters in an unfamiliar location with all the odds stacked against them and you see how they work together to get out for anyone listening to this basically just give you just quick inform you and say tom here tom gallagher he's more the Star Trek fan, Why me on the other hand I'm not a Star Trek fan, to be honest and I've never really watched the TV shows like you have, to be honest so that's that's just yeah. my take on it, so the pretty much you're getting a film getting a view from someone who has watched the TV show and have watched the films and really does like Star Trek and then you're getting a view from someone who hasn't really watched Star Trek, so yeah. you're getting that bonus here as well. I mean there's there's a big moment to really put it in perspective as well, I remember saying to you Oh, it was amazing how in certain parts during fight scenes, the music was basically referencing the original show. It sounded like music that could have been on the original show if they had a huge orchestra. And there were all these little hints like that. And I'm sure that, I mean, I don't think they've openly said that it's a joke at this point. But when uh, Bone says to Kirk, um, look, you've got a a great head of hair and blah, 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 and all of this. uh, That has got to be a joke about William Shatner's wig that he would have been wearing by that point in the show. Because this is set three years into the original show, so this is basically the end of season three, which is when it got cancelled. Yeah, because didn't he start to go bald in places and stuff like that? I mean, I I can't remember... Yeah, I can't remember if he wore the wig in the TV show or whether it was something that just had to be done when they transferred to movies. But I think he may have worn a wig in the TV show as well. Yeah. It might be a reference to the films. I'm not so sure about that. But yeah, yeah, but I had a little giggle in the theatre at that one. And uh, there were some lovely moments in it. The uh, photograph at the end showing the original cast was a particularly nice mm-hmm. touch. And uh, the story was was great. It was classic Star Trek in that you stick them on a planet, they haven't got access to their technology and their ship, and it's them using their brains to outwit their enemy, essentially, and to find an escape plan and get, like beat the odds. And it's like it's, it's what classic Star Trek has been built on for years, and it's something that... I mean, it was great as well that none of it was on Earth. Yeah, I thought... I thought it was really good that it felt like an adventurous type of film where basically you go out there, explore the universe type of thing. And the things that really worked for this film, um, basically apart from the visuals in places, um, I thought the acting was very good from, from all the cast as well. I thought the... That's been the strongest the thing, even with the weakest of the Abrams films, is the yeah. cast have always put in stellar performances. Yeah, and the second thing is that this story is a very solid story. It's very hard to try to quickly try to find out its its flaws to be honest there are flaws but it's mm. a very solid film it's the best way to put it is overall it's basically it's a cohesive story basically it holds all together from the first act second act and to the final act of the film as well to to the climax to the epilogue you know yeah yeah and the thing about it as well though into darkness we can all agree is a bit 
of a failure. I mean, they shouldn't have done Khan. The, right. it, it, the fact, once they decided they were going to do Khan, they shouldn't have lied and said it wasn't Khan once people said that's most likely Khan. Because yeah. that pissed people off. That that wasn't a fun reveal because everybody knew it was Khan. They were just lying to our faces, but everybody knew they were lying. And it was like, oh, fuck you at the end yeah. of the day. Well, the thing Whereas, is, yeah. Cool. With this, it feels like the they basically, I mean, I'm, I haven't barely seen the Star Trek thing, but this did felt like, Star Trek, you especially you said that yeah. as well for, uh, from this the very like, start. This feels like Star Trek in a way that Into Darkness and the first album Star Trek never quite did. I mean, they got some elements right, but this one truly feels like Star Trek yeah. for me. Even the costumes and stuff like that, and the props and the vehicles and the visuals yeah. and stuff like that. The best way to describe it is that they took the original designs of that stuff, but basically modernize it and basically yeah. revamp it is the best way to put it basically to make it look better on screen than what it would look like from from that generation to this generation you know basically yeah. just revamped it is the best way to put it i mean yeah before i didn't quite understand before with the uniforms why they had to have the starfleet logo all like so plastered over everyone's uh like sweater in i mean like top in the uh costume i mean it was literally printed everywhere like that's how they textured it. it was just like the starfleet logo everywhere and and the badge yeah and it was just like in this they completely got rid of that they kept it they kept it elegant they kept it you know simple they kept yeah. it yeah it, it looked like costumes that could theoretically be part of the original show yet clearly using they've made them using materials that they wouldn't have had access to back then I thought the other thing that was really good about this as well is that the references in this, because I remember watching this film with you when we saw it at midnight, mm -hmm. is that um, you gasped and also like, oh my God, they put that in there and stuff like that. There was tons of references. Like, half of them went over my head, and, but yeah, again, a load of them you caught. That's the thing. The, the biggest one I think that I noticed was the um, they referenced the um, prequel show heavily, which was kind of cool. Yeah, the fact that there was so much built within sort of the Enterprise era was really interesting for me. I mean, especially since the sets as well, they looked pretty close to what they were in the show. Yeah. I mean, they obviously they're not going to be exactly, but I mean, they, they did their homework. Yeah. And like when we see the, uh, the CCTV sort of footage for uh, the old, like the final log or whatever it is, um, the crew are wearing uniforms that are very reminiscent of Enterprise. And I, I know the first Abrams Trek did have a reference to uh, Admiral Archer in it. Uh, and his uh, dog, but this really, I was am I was amazed that they went there. Yeah, honestly, I, mm. yeah. <laughs> the moment they even got the costume down, even the starship, and also when we were watching this as well, I remember I said said to you um, again, like I said, it's a spoiler review, but um, the biggest one was that um, the main bad guy. I said very early on in the film to you, I, I said to you, I reckon he's the old formal captain. And yeah. sure enough, that was the twist. And I'm like, oh my God, I got that right. Yeah, and the good thing about when we both saw this film, we'd seen a couple of the trailers, but I think obviously you weren't following the no. film and I purposely stayed away from spoilers. Yeah, I And so I, I went in pretty blind, like, not really knowing what the story was. I knew it was like a stranded on a planet story and that there was some big threat. Yeah. But yeah. I think I, I think I saw the first trailer. I think I saw the first and second trailer of it. Apart from that, I didn't follow it at all, to be honest, for any of the information. But um, I think the only there bad... weren't a lot of trailers and TV spots no. like you do for a lot of films. They didn't market this film particularly heavily, which is sad, really. I think the studio didn't have a lot of faith in it. Yeah, well, we, we did. We were talking about that when we went in because it felt like that this film was essentially playing it safe because the last one in the darkness didn't do that well. Money wise, and this I one mean, this one so different. far has opened solidly, but yeah. it's not made as much as Into Darkness, which is yeah, a little yeah. bit worrying. Yeah, well, the thing is that I think it's it's quite interesting about the whole looking for aesthetic of it is that they um actually um went back on it and actually look at what came out at the time. And one of the biggest things I thought they took influence from it's essentially guardians of the galaxy especially yeah. when you went to the I mean, people, yorktown was it yorktown was it the spaceship yeah york yeah yorktown it was awesome awesome looking place it, it was fantastic the visual effects in this film for the most part were really great mm -hmm. and um the, the main problem i mean we'll talk about the guardians thing quickly and then touch upon a bit more about the visual effects but the guardians parallel people have been drawing since the first trailer because it is a song that's 
it, I mean, the fact just using a popular song in space, just yeah. it seems like God, people have said the Guardians had a monopoly on that almost, and it, that's not really the case. I, I think more more films can go in that direction I without mean, they, saying they can. Copy, but I think the, I think the thing is with Guardians of the Galaxy, it's sort of I, I would say. It sort of changed the sci-fi genre, like space adventure yeah. sort of thing. It influenced it heavily, and it seemed to have a knock-on effect with future films, especially with this one as well. You can tell the, that influence. The thing is, yeah, plus, the thing as well is just they've got a... I don't think Paramount really knew how to market this movie. I, didn't re, I don't really think they knew what they had on their hands. So they thought, there's, oh, there's a scene in the film with music. Let's do that. People, It will look like it's Guardians. We'll do that sort of thing. But that's not really the movie that it is. And unfortunately, it gave people a very false perception of what the movie was going to turn out to actually be. And that's, I think, the biggest problem with all of this is they marketed a completely different movie to what is actually in theatres. And, the and the problem is what they marketed it as doesn't particularly appeal to Trek fans. Yeah, that would mean I think it was trying to capitalise on that Fast and Furious. I think it was just yeah. Jason Lee that was doing this film. I think that was what they were trying to capitalise on. I mean, with that first trailer, I watched it as a Trek fan and just thought, okay, these films just don't particularly want me to in, to watch them anymore. Like They're clearly going after a completely different audience. These films just aren't for me anymore, clearly. And I was it was a completely different experience. Once I was in the theatre, I was like, oh my God, this film is completely made for Trek fans. But the trailers just didn't show that. Some of the clips they've released did that I've seen like later on when uh, I've gone back on reviews and I've seen some of the stuff they released beforehand. And um, yeah, yeah. I, th I think the one person that really did impress me in the film was Sophia Bautaro, who played um, Jalen in the film. The alien. Jayla. yeah, Jalen, yeah, yeah. She was great. I mean, the vi the um, makeup was fantastic on her as well. Like her performance really ran through, and you could what she was able to convey with all of that over her face yeah. it was amazing. Yeah, because I recognise her. She was the assassin woman in the um, Kingsman film who had the two metal legs. That's right, yeah. yeah. She was really good in that, and she was really good in this one as well. Really, oh, she was fantastic. Really played off the role as, like, you know, alien in that sense, you know, as an... It's hard to describe it, but she plays, like, an alien who's just learned how to speak fluid English, the best way to put it, you know? She did yeah, job it. Uh, the thing that I enjoyed about it was the way that she was speaking English at first. Like she, she got better at it, but when she started at first, you could tell that she'd learned English from mostly like that one video plus a load, plus a load of like textbooks and stuff like like a load of text. Like she'd been reading English maybe yeah. for a long time and hadn't actually heard it yeah. out loud properly. Oh yeah, and also I like the fact that she interacted with um, Scotty a lot in this film, played by Simon Pegg, who's. Simon really Pegg co wrote yeah. Yeah, co -wrote him co writing this. the script, he he gave himself almost all the best lines. He made sure Scotty had so much to do in this film. Because well, he was kind of shafted in the last one. They left yeah. they left him on Earth and then buggered off to do the adventure just to bring him back right at the very end. Yeah. And it was like, Oh the yeah, leave Scotty behind. Yeah. Good the thing I like about it was that they didn't fall into the trope of uh, say, Oh, he meets this female alien, oh it's obviously they're gonna get together, but really they didn't do that, yeah. you know. They didn't do that, which yeah. I liked it. If anything, there's more yeah. of a bromance between and Scotty and uh, what's his name? His um, the other engineering, you know, the little yeah. alien. alien yeah. Like been in it since the first one. They gave it a name, more, and they said the name a bit more in this one, but I can't for life me remember it at the moment. But the thing I like about when it came to Simon Pegg writing this, and also I can't remember the other guys off the top of my head who wrote this as well. Um, I think he co-wrote with James Wan before, so yeah. it was like Doug probably adapting Pegg's. Yeah. I think scripts to one sort of style. Yeah, I think it's Doug June, I think his name is, but um, I can't remember from my head. But yeah, the thing I liked about this is that the thing with Simon Pegg, if you notice within his writing, it's that he's very good at basically foreshadowing stuff that's going to happen later on within yes. his film. And there was a lot of this in this film, you know? Well, we've seen this with Shaun of the Dead, we've seen it with Hot Fuzz and uh, The World's End as well, which he obviously did with Edgar Wright, all three of those. Yeah. But we also saw it in, um, oh shit, what was that film called where it was done in America, Jason Bateman was in it and they've got the oh, alien. Paul. That's it. Yeah, I, I loved that film. A lot of people said it was too American, but Pig wrote it, and I could still see his humor. Yeah, in he it. wrote that with um, Nick Frost, didn't he? Yeah, yeah I love that film, and you can you can see that style in that. And he's he's written a lot. Spaced as well was greater foreshadowing stuff. Yeah, and uh, yeah, his his 
he's a dynamite writer. I just I my biggest concern is the fact that he's not writing the next one, frankly. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Uh, maybe they might get him on as a secondary writer to do a rewrite or something like that. I, they need to make Simon Pegg the Kevin Feige of the Star Trek <laughs> movies at this point because he's just <laughs> saved their franchise as far oh, as I'm concerned. Yeah. I mean, you had a solid director, you had a solid visuals, you had a solid writer. You, It was overall a solid film is the best way I can describe this, yeah. to be honest. And it did and well. And nobody expects it to be. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it had the dark it had the dark tones, it had the drama, it had the action, it had the complex character moments. It even though it knew where to be funny at certain moments. Well, it had its comedic value, tongue-in-cheek yeah. certain moments. Good Star Trek is yeah. full of... Brilliant, and, like witty, sarcastic yeah. humor, and with yeah. any sci-fi film, it had a solid villain as well. With Crow as Az Isaac as him, you know, really mm. solid villain, and I really I, liked his performance in this. I love how much of it was makeup as well. They didn't feel the need to go the CGI route, yeah, because that was very classic Trek. It's always good to see Captain Kirk fighting a rubber-faced alien. Yeah, there was so much makeup um, aliens in this film. You basically watch it from the very beginning all the way up to the end. There were so many in this film, uh, which oh. I was like, I, I was loving that. Yeah, honest. apparently there are a bunch of aliens in it that have been seen in Trek before, but they've also invented something. They've like created something stupid, like thirty new species. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. I like it when they they don't just build on the canon as well. They they actually take it another step and actually add a bunch more to it. Yeah. Well, overall, what do you think? Um, what wasn't good about this film, though? Yeah, there was plenty that wasn't great about it. I mean, I, it, as much fun as it was in the theater to watch the music thing at the end, even though it was classically explained with Star Trek Technobabble, and I was fine with the Technobabble because I've missed it, frankly. It's um, it's kind of a silly conclusion, yeah. and I, I'm not a fan of the song, but it it worked. I yeah. mean, that was a weak point, but that's that's not the weakest point yeah. by far. I've got I, one in particular that I'm. I remember that you said that during the visuals, especially the green screaming bits, that you got yeah. a bit iffy with towards the end. I mean, the CGI stuff is fantastic, but every time it's a green screened actor. Like especially when they're like jumping around with the anti gravity thing and they're like floating around and flying from platform to platform. Every time it's a C it's a green screen actor and not a CG replacement, it looks abysmal. Yeah. Like it's fa it's fan stick level of green screen yeah. at times. Yeah. I mean, especially when Idris Elba and um Oh, Chris Pine are both standing on uh, one of these platforms, it's like moving around, spinning around because the gravity's going mental. And it just looks awful. It's like they're. It's like the camera is. It, it's just odd. It just looks strange. Yeah. It's. It's almost like. I mean, the thing that I have to say. I mean, that's a minor quibble. There's a few moments where the visual effects I think could have been better. Yeah. But at the end of the day, this film cost 150 million to make. Whereas you look at something else like, uh, like a certain te uh, big superhero team up first time ever on screen movie that came out recently that will remain nameless. That cost two hundred and fifty million. Well, but we do talk about it a lot on the CBC, so yeah. that, that's your only hint. <laughs> but that that film cost two hundred and fifty million, whereas Star Trek Beyond was one hundred and fifty million. It, this does not look like it cost a hundred a hundred million less than that other movie. I I, I heard the budget was one hundred eighty five million. I, when I googled it, it said one hundred and fifty million. But... Okay, okay. Mm. Maybe, maybe that's including marketing. Yeah, but... that might have been good. But then be, I think. The other films, but <laughs> I think the other films' budget is significantly larger than that as well. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I mean, again, I'm not a huge Trek fan. I haven't watched the, I've seen episodes of the TV shows here and there, but overall, I think this is a good, solid film, and it it really endured me into it, and it just was a lot of fun. To be honest, mm. a lot of fun. Enjoyed it. I think if you're a Trek fan like you are, I think you will find really good joy in this because. It, it it seemed to stay close to the source material a lot more than the first two did, and it just it was fun. It was a fun space adventure which mm. I really enjoyed, and there's some really good philosophical moments in it, which Star Trek has always had been about those philosophical moments and character moments. You know, basically questioning about the meaning of life and where where do we go from here, sort of thing, and um, yeah. trying to overcome odds that doesn't lead to violence all the time. Yeah, it, it's the classic utopian future where it's, it's Roddenberry's vision where we're going out and we're not 
we don't have any need to really yeah. fight anymore. We we've got enough fuel and food and water. We yeah. we can live pretty yeah. well. But it, it's it's, it's the future that we have to be helping each other, and it's it's an all inclusive, very future yeah. uh, sort of future. Yeah, this this woman, this was when while like as it as it as the villain of the crop because he's a very good villain, and when you do get to the it's twist, very personal. Yeah, with very him. personal, and uh, that's probably what made it work so much. Mm. Towards the end, I mean, you, the twist does happen. One thing I did read about the film as well that I appreciated in the film, they said um, a lot of the, what stuff looked like uh, scientifically was actually based on real theoretical physics and stuff like that there's uh, certain certain uh, simulations that nasa have run as well like what it would look like if a ship was traveling at warp from like an observer's perspective and like it was pretty cool to see all these different ideas put into the thing because that's something that uh, next generation really built itself upon like using real world science theoretical science yeah. in the show and it was great to see that those sort of ideas come back yeah, I've, I mean, overall, I've really enjoyed this film, and I'm not, I'm not a big Star Trek fan, and I, I personally, I really enjoyed it, and hopefully, it will, uh, the fourth one be be good, and I will see the fourth, the fourth one when it comes out, you know. The only thing that's sad with the fourth one is obviously, um, Anton Yelchin has sadly passed yeah. away as well. We all know by now really what happened with that, and if you don't know, you can find out relatively easily. But it's, it's, they, they have said that he's not going to be recast in the next one, which I think is good. Yeah. I'm glad they're not just going to do go that route, and uh, they are working on a, um, on a way in, in within the script to explain his absence. So, um, yeah, it's it's very sad, and yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, because there was the, there was two. The basically they at the very end of the credits they did pay tribute to him and also for yeah. Ninoy as well. Yeah, oh, I thought that was very it, sweet. For you know they. Because the thing was that Lemon and I died before, wait, was yeah. it a year before this film was finished? So they had time to put a tribute moment in the film for him, but unfortunately not for the it other. It was a big part of the script, actually. It's yeah, just, it did, yeah. I think it was just, he must have died shortly before it went into like production, actually yeah. shooting. And they probably had to make some last minute changes to the script. Luckily, Simon Pegg's on set. <laughs> so, probably, uh, yeah. Easy, easy enough for him to fix, but. Um, yeah, I mean, what would you give this out of ten? Oh god, um, probably give it eight, eight, eight out of ten. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna give it an eight point five. Okay, that's cool. I I really enjoyed this movie. This was one of the better films, uh, one of the better like big tentpole movies that I've seen this year. Definitely the best Trek movie I think since Star Trek: First Contact. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, thanks for listening, guys, and. Uh, be sure to subscribe for more later on. Yeah, and check out well, the... that's shit. All right, see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Bye, guys. Hey guys, Armin here just reminding you that this video was made possible thanks to patrons. If you guys are interested in supporting us and making sure we keep the lights on, check out our Patreon where you can join other fans in supporting the CBC delivering content you guys have come to love and expect. And if you can't do that, give us a like and a subscribe. That goes a long way too.